Hi folks, it's Pete here, uh, probably for the last time actually, because uh, since the last episode went out, I've actually gone and sold all my records, so <laughs> um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to show you today, um, but we'll press on, I've got a bit of reggae, uh, some imports, last of the British, um, so we'll see how it goes, and we've even got a theme tune today, so here it comes. So, uh, how many of you was expecting to hear a dog barking on that? Because that's the old, uh, the old Tony Blackburn theme music from the sixties, and uh, I never knew what it was called actually, but it's actually called Beef Eaters, and it's by uh, the Johnny Dankworth Orchestra. Right, here's a cracking uh, British Northern record, really, really good production. Um, it's on Derham, it's a B-side, and this was big for about three weeks back in nineteen seventy-seven, and then they did a repress. But um, this is the original, and if you look closely here, you see above the catalogue number, it's got an inverted uh, matrix, and that's how you tell an original. Okay, Danny Williams, whose little girl are you? Next one's um, a Merseybeat band called the Denisons, and um, they were a uh, you know big noise at the Cavern in sort of sixty two, sixty three. Uh, Decker signed up stacks of Merseybeat groups, and um, this one, um, the A side is a version of um, Rufus Thomas walking the dog. Now, this side called uh, You Don't Know What Love Is is a, is a cracking kind of uh, piece of British beat. But if you look, well, if the camera will focus on it, it's the uh, composer. It says King. That's actually Benny King, believe it or not. And uh, he wrote it for him when they were uh, touring and um, supporting Benny King. So there you go, see? Another interesting fact. Here we go. Next one's um, another thing that I discovered, and uh, I, I have actually discovered quite a few good British records, but I've also discovered some bloody awful ones. And this one, I I, I quite like this when I found it because I thought it sounded a, a little bit like um, Peggy March, if you love me, you know, and it's kind of structure. But you wait and wait and wait for, for it to do something, and it and it never does. But uh, anyway, it's, a few people collect it now, you know. Um, I did have it covered up, can't remember what else, but. This is by the Steve Stevenson Show Band. Uh, sounds promising, doesn't it? It's called He's a Stranger. <laughs> Thank you. 
Steve Stevenson show band, and the vocalist was called um, Janice Butler, apparently. Not credited. Anyway, uh, Kiki D, this is a, a third single. Uh, it's from 1964, and a few of you might recognise it. It's called That's Right, Walk On By, and uh, it's a cover of a really good Tim Euro song, actually, tucked away on a B-side. Kiki D, and uh, That's Right, Walk On By. Kiki D, she was only 16 when she recorded that. That's brilliant. Sounds a lot like Timmy Euro, actually. Uh, this next one is um, an oldie from PJ Proby. Um, it wasn't a hit here. I think it was in Europe, and uh, there's some fantastic footage on YouTube of him singing this, um, or trying to sing it because he's so drunk that he forgets all the words. He's just <laughs> He puts his hand in front of his mouth so that people can't see where he's lip syncing. Um, this is called You Can't Come Home Again. for uh, this next record and um, this is Bobby V yeah Bobby V and uh, <laughs> you remember in the last episode I think it was I played um, Run Like the Devil by Kenny Roberts well this is the original version by Bobby V and as you can see it's autographed on the label look I've no idea whose autograph it is but it's autographed <laughs> Yeah. 
proper soul record now and uh, this is Marie Knight and her version of um, the uh, the Julie London classic Crimea River Paul Anker is um, incredibly hard to find. Um, this is only the second copy I've ever had of this, and the other one was a demo, mint demo. This is um, an issue, and um, Mick found this for me last week at the record fair. Ten quid, right? And the reason being is because the seller had totally skimmed it. In other words, taken the top surface off to make it look like it's you know decent quality, but it's not. It's 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 pretty poor. Um, now I've cleaned it up and it, it, it plays a lot better um, so not the greatest copy in the world of uh, Paul Anker and when we get there After those poppy stompers, is uh, is a nice one for the collectors out there. And um, to be quite honest, I don't even need to play this record. It's so beautiful. You could just just look at it. I mean, look at that mint stateside demo. Uh, it ain't a bad record either. Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels with Breakout. off the uh, the British section for today with um, a Red Atlantic and um, 
Yeah, you think oh, it's going to be boring, but not really because it's the uh, it's the rarest one on the label. And I think this is only the second copy of this I've ever had. It's Valeregan and Fireman. <laughs> a few uh, reggae and ska records now and rocksteady of course and uh, the first one on the very very collectible uh, UK Caltone label this is uh, Honey Boy Martin and uh, it's called Dreader Than Dread Now fellow Roo boys, stand fast and let us unite and deal with 100 or 1000 years Scary uh, sounding Honey Boy Martin with probably the, the, the best of the Rude Boy records. So that's called Dreader Than Dread. Um, I first heard that back in 72 on the Trojan Story triple LP um, when I was 12. And um, I set out to get a copy. And do you know what? It took me about 30 years to get one. Um, this is um, Johnny Organ. All right. Well, it's not Johnny Organ. It's actually Boris Gardner and the Love People. But the uh, I would say... Uh, Two out of every five um, reggae singles have got the wrong credits on for one reason or another. Uh, this is an in instrumental version of um, The Techniques, Man of My Word, and um, it's brilliant actually. <laughs> Um, incorrect label credits if you have a look at this one uh, you can see Breaking Up by Tommy McCook and the Supersonics well uh, Tommy McCook and the Supersonics uh, were the in-house um, band at Treasure Isle and they're certainly um, back in on this one but it's actually by the mighty uh, Alton Ellis who's um, definitely my favourite Jamaican singer and uh, he's coming up again in a minute but this is this is from the period where Rocksteady was turning into reggae it's just slightly faster and um, it's absolutely fantastic. This is uh, probably one of the best three examples of treasure hall music that you can find. This is called Breaking Up. <laughs> Thank you. 
thinking of buying that Alton Ellis record. It's still available on a repress, but um, I think it's only the Studio One re-recording that's available. It's nowhere near as good as that Treasure Isle version. Um, right, two records with the same title now. So, see, these things aren't just thrown together, you know. This is um, a track from the Ethiopians, a really famous uh, song, and it's called Train to Scarville. <laughs> with their version of Train to Scarville. Um, now we've got a second Train to Scarville. Um, this is by the Soul Brothers, uh, which is uh, Roland Alfonso's uh, spin-off group from the Scatterlites, um, containing many of the same members, to be honest. And this was recorded for Studio One, but it predates the, uh, the Ethiopians track by about a year and a half. This is an absolute scar monster. Have a listen to this. Trying to Scarville, I didn't want to take that off to be honest, but um, you know, time and all that business. And I, sadly, I've just sold that as well. What a fool! Um, right now, two records by the shame, uh, the shame. No, I mean the same artist, and uh, this is a guy called Shorty, uh, also known as Shorty the President. And uh, him and Rupi Edwards got hold of the uh, the the backing track to um, the Uniques My Conversation and they did about 10 versions of it in fact they did what a whole LP of it um, this one's called Aquarius Pressure and it's credited to uh, Shorty the President <laughs> I'm 
Shorty, the president, with um, I said it was called uh, Aquarius pressure, but um, I think that's mislabeled actually. I think it's called halfway tree pressure. Well, whatever. Um, here he is again with um, probably the, the most famous version of, of that conversation uh, back in track. This is called President Mash Up the Resident. <laughs> Sad. Um, I actually collect versions of that uh, that backing track that we've just been playing. Um, that's that's the original, the the uh, the unique one. It's not original; it's a repress. Uh, Doctor Sa Doctor Satan's Echo Chamber. That's another version. Uh, Give me the right, the heptones. That is uh, a vocal. President Rock, Joe White, another version. And uh, oh look, Shorty the President again with uh, Yamaway. Um, another one that I collect is uh, versions of. I'm trying to put this on while I'm talking. That <laughs> versions of the old uh, "You Don't Care" back in by the Techniques, um, which you probably know just as well by um, Nora Dean because uh, that was used for barbed wire. Here's the DJ version, or, or one of them anyway, and uh, that's how, that's rolling around a bit. Look, there you go. Look, here you go. Mosquito One by El Paso. Um, El Paso is Dennis Al Capone, and that was the name of his uh, sound system at the time. And this is a really fantastic DJ version of um, the You Don't Care backing. <laughs> Mosquito one, mosquito two, mosquito don't be not at Galaloo. Woo! Hear that? Uh-huh. What do you get all the tea about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Woo! One time it passed on one time. Two time it passed on two time. Three time it passed on three time. Four time it passed on four time. Well, some more from the uh, confusing world of reggae. If you look at this label, you can see it says uh, Ecstasy by John Holt on the Aki label. Uh, it's not Ecstasy by John Holt at all. It is, in fact, um, Give Me Love by Cornell Campbell, and it should be on the, the Green Door label. Um, it's hard on both labels, to be honest. This is just a total, total mispress. Um, do you know what? I bought about five copies of this Ecstasy by John Holt, trying to get the actual Cornell Campbell track. Um, but anyway, this one does play Cornell Campbell, and uh, this is a lovely piece of uh, early 70s reggae. It's called Give Me Love. Everything, give me love and dear 
Campbell there, that's a beautiful soulful record that um, I've not got many uh, 70s reggae uh, things really because um, basically I don't like them but uh, that, that really is one of the best. Also from the 70s but with a backing track recorded in uh, 1968 this is um, Iroy and um, a DJ tune called Hot Bomb and uh, the backing you'll probably recognise if you don't know a lot about reggae you might recognise it from a tune that charted in 75 called Fatty Bum Bum um, the bass line anyway but it actually comes from uh, a song by uh, Lloyd and Devon called Red Bomb Ball which should have said Red Bomb Ball you know it's about one of those those super balls that bounce yeah. anyway this is <laughs> Iroy and the Jumpers and uh, Hot Bomb for your musical education here comes that part with the number one station Shake the nation with his version. Yeah, yeah! Get the boom with all the moon. I'd like to see you in your school. Remember when we were in school? Give your feeling. You were playing. That's what we got to say. You were playing. Some will lead the way. Some will jump with me and let me swing and sway. Love one another. Just two more to go in this section. This is the Uniques um, from 1968. It says 69 on the label, I don't think it is. Um, what's beautiful about these records is that they're done in one take and then recorded live. And if you listen to the, the harmonies on this record, it's incredible. Um, the Uniques, probably the best of all the, uh, the, the Rocksteady groups, led by Slim Smith, of course. And um, this is called Love and Devotion. <laughs> Ellis, um, like I say, he was the king of Rocksteady, and um, this is the the song that started off the uh, the craze. Really, I know the, the Hopes and Lewis uh, take it easy was supposed to be the first, but um, it, it really got popular after this this uh, this one. Um, Alton Ellis uh, with the incredible Rocksteady. <laughs> Oh, 
the kind of soul and popcorn and northern things now. Um, I'm not quite sure where this record came from or what scene it, it started off on. Um, it's from the early 60s. It's, uh, it's a, a, a song, that, it's a story really, um, and it's, it's pretty funny um, if you listen to the lyrics. It's got the same backing track as, um, I think it's called My Book by Bruce Cloud. It's fantastic to dance to, but um, a, a bizarre one. Tommy T and the Targets, and it's called Sales Pitch. Uh, Tommy T and the Targets and uh, the, the poor chap never did get the date with the typist um, Just What the World Needs another version of uh, Kelly Garrett's Love the Only Answer uh, this is by Margaret Whiting and um, I'll probably only be able to play 20 seconds of this because it's that awful <laughs> People put on a list when they can't get the you know the good version, and they'll put uh, alternative version of Kelly Garrett, great or whatever. It's like you know when they have um, the other version of Cajun Heart by Jeffrey Metallico, and they put best version. Huh? <laughs> okay, now. Um, right, here's a great early '60s record. I honestly thought this was by a girl group, just going by the vocalist, but it's not. It's a, it's a male group. Uh, they're called the Pageants. I'm not sure if I've done this one before, but um, it doesn't matter, it's worth hearing again, and it's called Are You Ever Coming Home? <laughs> Oh, I miss you. 
Next up is uh, Joni Summers, who uh, recorded one of my favourite northern tracks ever. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Don't don't pity me. Uh, this isn't this isn't a northern track at all. It's just a really good sixties, early sixties girly pop sound. You know, brill building stuff. Um, it's called I'd Be So Good For You. Joni Summers there, and um, an, another early 60s girl, a massive success, was Peggy March, and uh, she's known for a couple of records on the northern scene. This is an absolutely superb beat ballad, and um, it's really rare, a stock copy actually, they're, they're nearly all white demos. This is called Losing My Touch. <laughs> one is another one that I found in my shed you know my magic shed where records live <laughs> and breed um, do you want to see my shed hang on a bit well here we are in my shed um, th honestly th there are records everywhere there's like there's one two three four five six seven eight nine there's about ten ten DJ boxes full there of crap there's records down the back there and I mean, I'm everywhere, um, and this is where I, I, I get all the rubbish from. So anyway, I was in that shed the other day, and um, looking through a, a pile of like uh, imports that I bought as a job lot and chucked away because they were crap. And I saw this one, and I thought, well, that looks interesting. Huh? And uh, it turns out it's a, a girl vocalist. Uh, it's called Nine Out of Ten. A really nice girly group record, but I, I think the intro is way too long. A bit like this one that I'm doing now. But uh, that probably sport its chart chances, I don't know, but it's pretty good. Have a listen anyway. My mama asked me why I was crying. I said the boy I love was a cheap and a Dry your eyes, she said. Don't be
time for two more. Um, this is Jan Bradley uh, from Chicago on the, uh, the very obscure Night Owl label. This is called uh, Behind the Curtains and it's written by Curtis Mayfield. And if you listen closely, you will hear the impressions on backing vocals. Um, superb record, Jan Bradley, Behind the Curtains. <laughs> the last one and um, I'm not sure if this is going to be the last last ever edition of uh, Lost Vinyl Gems of the 60s. If I buy more records then I'll do more of these and and it's been great having people saying how much they enjoyed it. Um, well I'll, I'll try, you know. I won't, won't say, never say never. Um, I'm going to finish with the oldest record I've ever played on one of these shows and um, unfortunately my jukebox has done a bit of damage to this one but it should still sound great. This must be from 1954, 55. This is uh, JB and his Hawks. And um, listen to the washboard on this, and it's uh, called Combination Boogie. <laughs> There you go, folks. Thanks very much. And I managed to get through the entire programme without once saying...